Welcome to That's the Word, wholesome tales for the whole family. I'm Father James Yamauchi. Today's story, Extracting the Files. The men were in the government office early that morning. The mission that they had chosen to accept was to remove all of the records from that government office and take them away quickly and quietly. The small group of men worked, going through files upon files, taking them out and loading them up. Having an inside man made the job much easier. He opened the door for them and helped them ensure that they got everything. The biggest concern was not alerting anyone else who was standing guard over these files. They were making a lot of progress. Slowly, but surely, these files were loaded up. They were almost done when they heard a commotion outside. They had been spotted. Rounds peppered the building. The agents quickly grabbed what they had and made a run for it. The guards were in hot pursuit, but they could not overtake the well-prepared agents. The agents made it some distance, but by the next day, their pursuers had overtaken them and held them at gunpoint. After a brief standoff, the agents decided to surrender the files peacefully. Their orders had been to not resort to bloodshed. There had been no bloodshed, but other than that, the mission was a failure. The files were taken back and placed under even heavier guard. These agents had been sent to remove government archives by the government itself. An enemy force was invading the country and growing close to the place where the archives were kept. The president wanted these archives removed, ostensibly to keep them in a safer location. But the citizens of that city did not want the archives removed and flatly refused to allow this to happen. They feared that if the archives were removed, any hope that their city might become the capital would die. So the citizens organized patrols, monitoring the archive office, lest the government try to remove them. The president did try to remove them in what many considered an overreach of his power. But an innkeeper, Angelina Eberly, spotted the activity and alerted the town. Angelina even turned a defensive cannon and shot it at the archive's office to drive off the government agents. Rallying to her cry, 
the citizens of that town ran down the intruders and successfully recovered the archives. Because of this incident, known as the Archives War, this city, despised by President Sam Houston, remains to this day the capital of the state of Texas, a capital city named Austin. And for this week, that's the word. John Peter and I, for the first time, would like to dedicate a story. This story, Extracting the Files, we would like to dedicate to our good friend, Father Brian. I know how much he loves the great state of Texas. And so, Father Brian, this story is for you. And for everyone who loves our great state. We were reminded of the story a few months ago when we went to the capital of Texas, we visited Austin, and that was actually the first time that Father James and our sister had ever been to the Capitol building in Texas. I'm really glad we actually stopped. I've always seen it driving through Austin on I-35. You mean parked on I-35? That works too. <laughs> yes, Austin traffic is a whole nother topic, but it was wonderful to visit our state capital. We had planned this at the last minute, so it was a great addition to our journey. That was a lot of fun. The Capitol building in Texas is a really nice looking Capitol building, I gotta say. And for me, one of the incredible things is the annex area. Oh yeah, so they didn't have enough room in the building itself for all of the legislators given the growth of the state. So what they actually did is they dug a underground area behind the Capitol where they added more offices underground. That way the Capitol grounds still look very nice and the Capitol building still retains its original shape mm -hmm. while still allowing more offices to be in the building and directly connected to it. So you don't have to walk outside or anything to get between these different offices. It's an impressive building in an impressive space. Very appropriate for an impressive state. Very true. A state that was a country for nine years. Now it's trivia time. Da, 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 da. So last story's trivia question was... When they met on the Appian Way, what exactly did St. Peter ask our Lord? And the answer, which we gave a hint, is a Latin phrase, is Quo vadis domine? Which means, where are you going, Lord? And this story's trivia question is for people like Father James, who doesn't know too much Texas history. What city did Sam Houston want to be the capital of Texas? That question again, what city did Sam Houston want to be the capital of Texas? If you think you know the answer, email us or contact us on social media and let us know. John Peter, before we close, I just have to say, when we were envisioning that's the word, I never thought that we would ever tell a story about Austin, Texas. How about you? I guess we got to just keep it weird here. <laughs> but it's a wholesome tale for the whole family. That's true. If you enjoy That's the Word, please share the word. You can see the story extras for this story, Extracting the Files, at thunderrock.org, where you can see a famous sketch of the Archives War. Thunderrock.org is also where you can sign up for our weekly newsletter and where you can find our social links and our email if you have any feedback or story ideas. Thanks for listening and join us next Wednesday for another wholesome tale for the whole family.